a professor there with uh, California State University, Dr. Foote. It's good to have you with us here on the program. First off, tell us your understanding of the, of the most recent developments in Libya, please. Well, the uh, most recent developments that, in this country that are relevant uh, are the uh, American government uh, being proud of the fact that they have frozen more than $30 billion of Libyan bank accounts. Uh, <clears throat> for those of us who are old enough to remember 1979 in Iran, this is a, a rerun of an old movie where America froze bank accounts that the Shah had left in America and never paid the money back. The American government has a bad track record of stealing money from other people. And so not only did the dictators steal the money, uh, the American government hasn't returned it. They should be returning it with interest and penalties. Uh, likewise, today, uh, the American media was talking about, well, we'll get this all to end by offering Gaddafi a... A, a chance to uh, move somewhere else. Well, this is a repeat also. Uh, the, the Shah of Iran was sent to Panama to live. Uh, notice that the American government hasn't offered Gaddafi a place to live in the United States. So I don't know when these stupid dictators will ever learn that America is a really poor uh, defender of them and all they want is all this money uh, pulled into America where it can be kept. In the case of Libya, uh, the reports are that uh, he had money invested in a Libyan soccer, uh, Italian soccer team in Fiat, Financial Times, and we'll learn as the governments around the world start confiscating this money how many uh, investments he had everywhere except Libya. Uh, one of these leaders learned to take care of their own people and make investments back home. So that's been, uh, I think, the most significant uh, at, at this end. Uh, yes, as uh, your previous speaker was sure. talking about, uh, there's certainly some of the neoconservatives or neo-Trotskyites have been saying we should have no-fly zones and possibly invading Lib Libya. Yeah. Uh, Professor Foote, of course, uh, you brought up the issue of um, the United States considering the option of uh, helping the, uh, the embattled Libyan leader to uh, be transferred elsewhere once the revolution uh, gets very close to its uh, final days. But the thing is that uh, let's, uh, we're just painting scenarios here. But if, uh, say, a country within um, Africa or somewhere else, let's, let's just take uh, Zimbabwe, for example, led by Robert Mugabe. What, what if he offers uh, asylum to, to, to um, Amr Gaddafi? What would be a reaction from the United States then? I think the American government would be thrilled to see him go uh, any place except America and just be out of there if it could end today and not make America look any worse than it does right now with respect to the future of relations with the Libyan people. Okay. Obviously, the Libyan people would have a very different view of it. They'd say, you murdered uh, thousands of our people. Uh, we want you. Uh, why are you being protected by America? Mm -hmm. Dr. Foote, uh, let me just uh, put across with you something that I've recently heard uh, coming from Mr. Gad Mr. Gad uh, Gaddafi. Uh, saying a couple of uh, positive sentences about U.S. President Barack Obama, saying he is a good man. What do you think it means at this point in time? <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it's a, a signal without losing face that I, I'm, I'm willing to deal with you uh, in this situation. Okay. Well, uh, what about this uh, international... Let's just uh, consider this international reaction that we've had so far. Um, uh, to the Libyan crisis, we had um, the EU imposing sanctions, including uh, an arms embargo, asset freeze, and travel ban on Colonel Gaddafi and his close entourage. This is um, the latest reaction from the EU. Your comment on that, please. I, that's just very short-term uh, news for local consumption of voters. Uh, I mean, we've just seen in recent days David Cameron and the British uh, weapons merchants wandering through Egypt and other places. Uh, it doesn't take long for them to go back into a country, uh, staying out a few days. Who would, who would want to go in today anyway, and who would you sell it to today? So uh, that, I think it's entirely for the local consumption of your, your local voters. 
And if uh, if if we're the, um, if we take it that is for the uh, for, for for the consumption of uh, p people who are, who, are, who are hearing this news in Europe, uh, uh, what do you think the reaction would be? Don't they think people? I mean, don't they think that this reaction is coming too late? defense businesses are giant businesses in Europe and in America. In America alone, we have more than 200,000 people employed in defense industries and others employed in making weapons. So this is really big business. Uh, it, regardless of whoever comes to power in a country, it has to deal with uh, that interest. So the, the problem needs to be handled at the other end with countries uh, refusing to buy all of these. Uh, I mean, the Shah of Iran, again, was a perfect example. Uh, Grumman uh, Aircraft was going bankrupt. And so the Shah started placing orders for all, all of their, their products, and they went to the largest sales in history overnight. Uh, this is the power that a single dictator has in, in, a, in a rich country uh, uh, to do this. And the other countries in Europe and America know this, that all it takes is a small number of uh, dictators to, uh, to make business good again. Okay, well, you're speaking of uh, uh, making business good. Let's just uh, uh, consider the history of, uh, of Gaddafi having helped the economy, perhaps the economy of the U.S. Do you know of any instance of that? Obviously, the investments alone, I mean, I, they didn't reveal exactly what kind of accounts the, the $30 billion plus is parked in. I don't know if it's bank accounts or stock market accounts or real estate investments or what. Uh, but just the mere presence of uh, an additional $30 billion of investments in any country is very helpful. Uh, it's $30 billion that could have been put to work in his own country for the benefit of his people. Of course, uh, Professor Foote, you earlier spoke of the, uh, of the frozen Iranian assets uh, that were frozen right after the Iranian Revolution in 1979 by the U.S. Um, and do you think the same fate is awaiting the uh, money of the Egyptian people? Sorry, Libyan people, I mean. America's history has been very slow to uh, return money. Uh, I think it's uh, going to be depending on the good behavior of who the future leaders are. So uh, you're basically holding the country hostage. Oh, yeah, but the question is that why, if you want your money back, why should you have good behavior? I mean, like, is this how America deals with people himself? Unfortunately, it is, and the, the biggest embarrassment for America today is Iran, because Iran finally has an independent government that is not under the thumb of any foreign country, and that's an example that the American political leaders cannot tolerate, and that's why they keep doing all the scare tactics about Iran and claiming Iran is such a, a terrible enemy, uh, when in fact uh, our problem is right here in this country with our own leaders. Of course. Well, I don't know what's in the making, but perhaps if they want to find excuses against uh, this issue, as far as Libya is concerned, I'm sure they're going to be able to find another one. But uh, mm, uh, the, uh, the thing was this latest reaction that I've uh, uh, read about from Mr. Gaddafi was apparently uh, mm, had an interview with one of these uh, uh, major TV stations, and uh, he said that people loved him, and he uh, denied there have been any protests in uh, Tripoli. How do you see his reaction? The man seemed to be very, very relaxed. Uh, he's not the, the first leader who uh, looks in the mirror and believes this. I mean, the Shah of Iran was like that. Uh, many others are like that. Uh, by contrast, I, I, I once worked in Norway, and I was uh, walking down the street, and the, the king rode by on a bicycle and said hello to me, and he had no security guards around him. Now, there's a leader who truly is able to do these things. All these other leaders who claim their people love them, uh, I dare them to walk down any street in where they are. I dare the American president to walk without the, the Secret Service down the streets of Washington, D.C. They, they, they live in their own... Uh, imagination uh, uh, they, they read too many press good press clippings about themselves they surround themselves with yes people and they, they they believe all these things that they're the leader of the people it's, it's just not true 
Okay, many, many thanks, uh, Professor Paul Sheldon Foote with California State University in Irvine, California. Thank you for your time and for sharing your views with Press TV. Thank you, viewers, for watching in three minutes international news.